one of the most common setups for multi warehouse environments is to have a centralized warehouse, which resupplies other warehouses or retail stores that serve the end customer. In this video, we're going to show you how Odoo can make that extremely easy. So we're going to set all of that up from a brand new database so that we can see how we can resupply our retail stores from a central warehouse. To make sure that we understand the prompt, we're going to look at our drawing here. Here you'll see a central distribution hub, which receives all of its inventory from our vendors. In turn, it supplies all of our retail stores and our retail stores supply the customers. Now this is a simple example that gets uh, asked quite often, but you can make this much more complicated and you'll follow the same principles that we go over in this video. So if you had, a, if you had multiple distribution centers and maybe you have one central a warehouse that supplies the distribution centers across different coasts in the United States. Let's say you have one in the East Coast, West Coast, and Central. Then you can essentially create another layer to this and it would operate the same exact way. But in this example, we're just going to keep it simple with one distribution hub that supplies our retail stores. And it, for the purposes of this example, we're going to assume that our retail stores never buy directly from our vendor, but it's quite possible to do that as well. So let's get right into things. We're in a single company environment here. It's a brand new database. We'll go into inventory and we'll go into configuration warehouses. And here we have one warehouse. I'll just rename this to warehouse one. And I'm going to create multiple warehouses. Next thing I'll do is create warehouse two. Actually, let's call this retail store one. And we'll create two more of those. Call this retail store two. I'm going to say the short name here is RS2. We'll worry about all of the settings and configurations in just a second. And let's create our last one here, which is retail store three, and we'll name it RS3. All right. So here we have warehouse one, retail store one, retail store two, and retail store three. And if we look at our drawing, we have our central distribution hub, which is our warehouse, retail store one, retail store two, and retail store three. Now, if we go into each one of these, we'll see that there's several settings that we can choose from. If we turn on developer mode here, we'll be able to see additional settings, but we don't need those at this time. But just to take a look, let's go into developer mode by going into settings, and we'll activate the developer mode here. There's also plugins you can use for this, but just to show you, we went that way. We'll go back into warehouses, and now let's look at warehouse one. You'll see all of this technical information that just lays out uh, the different picking locations, input and output locations, and your default warehouse location. So here we see that warehouse one has buy to resupply check, and this just tells the system the default route for warehouse one is to buy its goods from the vendors. If we go to retail store one here, we also have buy to resupply. So if we have this check, Odoo will allow us to buy our, our products from a vendor uh, with some default routes that it will create for us. However, if we don't want to do that, we can uncheck and just select warehouse one. Now what this is going to do is create a route for us under our routes, which is essentially Odoo's framework for moving products across the database. If you're not familiar with routes, you can create any kind of customized routes to move products across your database and locations, but several are created for you by default when you install a new warehouse or you select these different options such as resupply from. So here we have resupply from warehouse one. We're going to do the same thing for each one of our retail locations. So we're going to select retail store uh, resupply from warehouse one again, and we'll do that for our last one here, which is retail store two. So now we have the configuration set up for each one of our warehouses. Warehouse one will buy from our, our vendors. Warehouse, our retail store one, two, and three will resupply from warehouse one. Now if we go into configurations and we can look at our routes. So we'll just click on routes here. We see that Odoo has created retail store one to supply products from warehouse one, which is a new route that we can utilize on our products to make sure that we can resupply to our retail store one from our warehouse one.
if we go into settings here, we want to be able to look at all of our routes. We can select these options, which will create menu items and our configurations. So we'll save this. And now we can look at all of our routes as well as the rules associated with those routes. So here we have all of our retail stores supply products from warehouse one. And then we also have receiving our stock in one step. So if we went back to those warehouses, we'll see some additional options because we turned on the multi-step route functionality. And here we see where we have incoming and outgoing shipments all received in one step. And in other videos, I talk more about this, but essentially this allows you to create multiple steps in order to receive inventory into your warehouse. So for example, if you had an input location like a dock where you want to receive the shipments in, but then you're going to uh, further count them and distrib distribute them to the specific locations within the warehouse, then you might have a two-step process. And if you have maybe a quality check in between, you can do a three-step process. But of course, these are all customizable. Um, you can create any route that you need, but these are just the default ones that Odoo supplies that usually suffice for most businesses. So now that we have our warehouses set up, if we go to our overview screen here, it's helpful to group this by warehouse and we'll save this as our default search. And now we'll be able to see each one of our operations by our location. So warehouse one's operations, retail store one, two, and three, each one of their operations uh, grouped and separated in this Kanban view. Now from here, what we're gonna do is just create a few products. We'll quickly, quickly create uh, product one, two, and three. So we'll just say product one, and we'll say can be sold, can be purchased. Let me just remove these taxes just for simplicity. They're all in our all product category. We don't need to worry too much about that right now. Under purchase, we are gonna set a vendor. So we'll create vendor one for this product. And let's just say the cost price is $2 and we'll remove that. Now under inventory here, I want to select all my routes for this product. We can have these routes apply to the entire warehouse or the product category. It's up to you. We don't necessarily need to choose these, but I'll choose them here just to simplify things a bit. And now I'll duplicate this product and we'll make this product two. And we'll also set a vendor. This vendor does not duplicate when we duplicate the product. Let's say this is $5. And lastly, we'll make product three. And we'll just have them all set to vendor one just for our just for this example, make sure that it's extremely straightforward. Now we have all of our products created, product one, two, and three. Now it's time to set up our reordering rules so we can make sure that we have a set number of units per location. Now under our reordering rules here, we can create reordering rules for each one of our locations and we can set them to either automated or manual. So automated is going to automatically trigger the creation of RFQs, whereas manual will have to go into the replenishment screen and select what we want to reorder at each point. So the first thing I'm gonna do is select our product one, and this is going to be in our main distribution warehouse. We're gonna select the preferred route, which is going to be buy, and we're going to buy it from vendor one. Now we're gonna set a minimum quantity. Let's say that we wanna have 50 units minimum and 100 units as a maximum. And we're gonna do the same thing for each one of our products, two and three for warehouse one. So we'll select the buy route, vendor one, and we'll just set these to the same as well. So let's buy vendor one and 50, 100. Now the next thing we're going to do is create our reordering rules for each one of our locations. So now we can say for product one, and we're gonna select RS1 stock, this one is going to be retail store one, supply from warehouse one, which is going to be the default route. So when products are needed in our retail store one, it's going to automatically create resupplies. So a delivery from warehouse one to our retail store one and a receipt in retail store one in order to receive those products in. So let's say we just want 10 units and 20 units. And I'm gonna do the same thing, we'll fast forward this, uh, for each one of our products. Okay, so we have all of our reordering rules set up for each one of our warehouses. We'll notice that for retail store one, they're all resupplying from re with this preferred route set to retail store one, supply from warehouse one. And then the same thing is true for 
retail store two and retail store three. Now keep in mind, we did not have to create these routes. Odoo created them for us once we selected them on the settings page of the warehouse. The only warehouse that is going to resupply from the vendor and buy them is the main central warehouse, which is named warehouse one. If we look at our trigger here, we'll notice that our trigger is set to manual and we'll leave it manual just for this example. Now, if we left it as automated, Odoo will automatically create the RFQs for vendor one here and the receipts and resupply for each one of our warehouses. Now we'll notice here that the minimum and maximum quantity is 10 and 20 for RS1, 2, and 3. And we want a minimum of 50 and 100 units or a maximum of 100 units inside of our warehouse. So what this is saying is essentially we want to have some product inside of our main warehouse so that we can distribute them to our retail stores and our retail stores also have a minimum and maximum quantity that they want to hold on hand. So now that we've created all of them, we can begin to resupply. So what we're going to do is go into our replenishment screen. And under our replenishment screen, we'll see all of the products that are needed. You'll notice under this header here for to order, the system is telling us how many we need to order. So the first thing we're going to do, let's select all of our retail stores so we can resupply those retail stores. And let's click order. Now what you'll notice is the two order column for our warehouse one has increased. And the reason this increase is because the system's always going to tell us how many we need to reorder in order to meet our maximum quantity, as well as supply any demand that is currently created. So our forecast right here is negative 60 units. And that's because for each one of these products, 20 units are requested by each retail store. So if we didn't order anything in our current moment, we have negative 60 forecasted. So we need to make sure that we get at least 60 in order to supply the demand from the retail stores. But in order to meet our maximum quantity as well, we'll need to order a total of 160. The uh, same thing is true for sales orders. So any demand that's created in the warehouse to use these products, our two order quantity will increase to meet our maximum quantity on hand, plus any demand that's created throughout the warehouse, whether that's a product that needs to be used in a manufacturing process or a product that needs to be sent out to a customer. Now, before we order any of this, let's go to our overview screen and let's see what was created um, because of our reordering here. Now you'll notice that we have some delivery orders that were created. We have some receipts for retail store one, retail store two, and retail store three that were also created based on our demand that was generated when we clicked on order for each one of our retail stores. So we have a receipt created in retail store one, retail store two, and retail store three. And we have delivery orders created in our warehouse one. Now, one thing to notice is that our delivery address was actually the same on each one of our warehouses. So the system only created one delivery from our main warehouse. So what we actually want to do is we'll cancel these and redo them. This is a good learning experience. We want to make sure that we set the actual warehouse location so that the system doesn't combine our operations. Now under warehouses here, we'll notice that the address for each one of these was just our main warehouse address. And we don't want that because they have different physical addresses. We want to make sure that we separate them. So we'll go in here and just create new addresses for each one of these locations. So we have our main company warehouse and we'll just create uh, different addresses. So we'll just call this uh, retail store one, RS2, and RS3. Now under our retail store one, we'll switch this location to RS1. retail store two and where and retail store three now we'll have to recreate these so I'll just cancel a few of these and we'll redo them
because we manually changed everything, the system does not recognize that we changed the delivery addresses. So I just want to redo that from scratch and we'll go into our replenishment. And the system knows now that we don't have any pending uh, delivery or receipts so that it increases back the order quantity that we need to order. So we'll do the same thing again here. I'm gonna deselect these and I'm gonna click on order here, which should now generate three deliveries, which it has here in under delivery orders and retail store one, two, and three each have a receipt to receive those products in. Now, if we went to one of our products here, let's say product one, and we look at our forecasted units, we're in warehouse one here. So this is the warehouse that we're looking at, warehouse one. We see that we have three pending deliveries that need 20 units each, which will make our outgoing unit 60 and our forecast negative 60. Now, if we went into a different warehouse, such as retail store one, we'll see that our forecasted units is 20 because we have a receipt to receive 20 units at some point in the future. And based on our lead times and everything, um, this is set at 513. So the same thing is true for retail store two and retail store three. So now let's go back to our replenishment screen. Let's select all and we'll click on order here. And this will generate an RFQ in order to purchase those products. If we went back to our forecasted units, we'll see that we have a request for quotation here, PO number 001 for 160 units. Our forecasted units have not updated yet because we didn't confirm this RFQ. Once we confirm the RFQ, our, the system will create a receipt for those products and therefore the receipt will be factored into this forecasted units. So let's go to our main dashboard here and we'll click into purchase. And we'll see that a PO was created for 160 units. Of course, you'll send this by email to your vendor. Your vendor could respond right into the chatter. And once you get a confirmation, we will confirm this order. And notice here that we're delivering to warehouse one. So this, the vendor will know where to deliver it, which is our main warehouse. And as a result of that, if we went into our inventory, a new receipt was generated to receive the products. And if we went into our products, product one, and we went to our forecasted units, we, need, we now see that we have a hundred total forecasted based on all of the products coming in and going out. So 160 incoming, minus 60 outgoing, which will net us to 100 units for warehouse one. And you'll notice that the system automatically ties each one of our POs on a first in first out basis. PO number one is going to allocate 20 units to uh, warehouse out two, 20 units to warehouse, warehouse out three, and 20 units to warehouse out four, which is each one of our deliveries uh, for each one of our retail stores. And then we'll also have 100 units that are just free to use inside of our warehouse, so it's not tied to anything, and that we're, that's where our forecast units come into play. And nothing has changed in our retail store one, two, or three. They still have a forecast of 20 units. So now let's go into our inventory. Under our inventory screen here, our you know, warehouse employees may come into our receipts here to receive the products in or they may elect to use the barcoding module to receive those products in. Here we'll just go into receipts. And now we will count our physical units on hand, set the quantities uh, that we've counted. Now we've counted all of our units, they're all good, so we'll set the quantity if we wanted to. So setting the quantity, we'll just update all of these to the demand uh, column here. We did it manually, but you can use the set quantities if you want to do it in bulk, and then we'll just validate that. So now validating that has told the system that we are confirming the receipt of these products and now they're in our warehouse. So if we went back to our product one and we looked at our on-hand quantity as 160 and our forecasted quantity, 160 on hand plus zero incoming minus 60 outgoing, which is 100, 100 units within warehouse one, but 160 units total throughout all of our warehouses, which was showing on that smart button under product one. Here we'll see that these the stock items are actually reserved for these specific outgoing products on a first in first out basis. And this is done automatically by the system. We can choose to have a reception report on the receipt to manually do this. 
but by default the system will allocate our inventory on a first in first out basis to each one of our deliveries whether that's to a customer or to resupply our uh, other retail stores now from here inside of inventory we can now deliver these items so we're going to pick them pack them ship them off to each one of our retail stores we'll do them we can do it individually set the quantities validate and we'll go into each one of our receipts here for our deliveries rather count the quantities that we're picking and packing ship them off and again we'll set these quantities and one thing you should notice here is that from warehouse one stock we're moving them to a inter warehouse transit location which is going to allow us to see products that are in transit sometimes people elect to have different transit locations for each one of your retail stores. So you might have an inter warehouse transit retail store one or in transit to retail store one so that you can differentiate between which products are outgoing to which retail store. So once we validate this, let's go into our stock and we'll see that we have 100 on hand for each one of our product one inside of warehouse one, for example. If we go to retail store one, we have zero on hand, but we have 20 incoming for each location. And the same thing is true for retail store two and retail store three. Now moving on, we'll look at locations. And here we're looking at only internal location. So warehouse one stock has 100 units in each. But if we remove this internal location, we'll actually see that there's 60 units in our inter warehouse transit, which means that these are in transit to one of our other locations. And then once we receive those products in those other locations, these inter warehouse transit locations will be zeroed out. And each one of those warehouse stocks so retail RS1, RS2, RS3 slash stock will have 60 units in each. And just a couple of other things here. All of our move history is recorded. So we see our products came from our partner location inside of warehouse one. They are now moved from our warehouse one to each one of these inter warehouse transit locations, which is all the same location. Same thing. And we, of course, we can look at our valuation for our products. Now, from here, I'm going to receive our products in in each one of our warehouse stores or retail stores. We can count them, set the quantity and validate once we receive them and they'll be ready to use. And we'll do the same thing for retail store two. And the same thing for retail store three. And now if we go to our products, we'll see 160 tonal units on hand, 160 forecasted because we have none that are outgoing currently. This is for warehouse one. Retail store two has, or retail store one has 20 units on hand, none outgoing. And if we look at our locations again, we'll see that if I remove this internal location, we no longer have any inventory inside of those inter warehouse transit. We do have negative unit in our partner locations because that's where our products originally came from. And of course our move history was updated from our inter warehouse transit, our warehouse, our retail store one, two and three has received stock of product one, two and three. So now from here, you can sell those units just so we can uh, look at a quick example here. We'll just say this is customer one and we're going to sell first let's go to other information here we'll see that we're in warehouse one so this is our main warehouse we're going to select the warehouse here that we want to ship from so we can say retail store one or retail store two now each user can have a default warehouse in their user profile so that it would automatically set to the location that they're in and then we can add our products here so maybe we ship out uh, product one and if we look and hover over this, we can see the units available inside of our warehouse that we have selected. So we have 20 units. So now just for this example, let's say that we're going to uh, ship out 21 units, which we don't have. So if we hover over this, we'll see that we only have 20 available. We'll confirm this. And this is going to create one delivery for 21 units. And that's going to exist in our inventory under retail store two. In our operation type delivery orders, we'll see one the process. We don't have enough units. If we go to operations here, we see the demand is 20. We reserved 
or the demand is 21 rather, and we reserve 20 because that's all we have, we can check availability. We don't have any, but maybe we want to ship out 20 for now. So we'll ship out the 20 units and we'll validate this and the system will ask us if we want to create a back order. So we'll say yes, create a back order. Now from here, if we went to our inventory overview, we see we have that one back order that we need to ship out, but we have no products product. We have no product one in our retail store too. So if we went to operations here and went to replenishment, we'll see that the system is now requesting a total of 21 units from RS2 stock. So into RS2 stock, resupply to, and if we had this as automated, the system will just trigger the creation of these uh, receipts and deliveries automatically. Now here it's telling us to order 21, and the reason why we're ordering 21 is because we have one that's forecasted, and in order to reach our maximum quantity here, we're going to ship out 21 units minus one, which get us to our maximum quantity of 20. So let's click on order once here, and these into warehouse transit have been generated. And if I go to the overview here, we have one receipt in retail store two and a delivery order in retail store one. Now, again, another reason why you might want to have it manual because you might have a schedule where you ship out to each one of your retail stores maybe once a week. So you want to have them all filled up and then you ship them all out at once. So here I'm going to set the quantity and I'm going to deliver these units. But before I do that, I actually want to create a new sale order for retail store two. I'm going to say this is customer two. And I'm going to say product one. And let's say that we're going to ship them, they want 30 units. And I'll confirm that. So that's going to create additional demand in our replenishment, but I don't want to do anything there yet. Actually, we, we didn't select the right retail store. So let me cancel this. We'll duplicate. And we'll make sure that we select retail store two here. And we'll confirm. Now we have two delivery orders, one back order, one pending. And a delivery order here in warehouse one, I'm going to ship out to our retail store two. And now I'm going to receive those in our retail store two. And before I do anything else, I want to see that we have two to process. But if we go to our product one and we go to our forecasted units for retail store two, I just wanted to point out how the system is handling our first in first out method of allocating our inventory to each one of our pending sale orders. So one unit that we just received is going to be allocated to sales order one, 20 units are going to be allocated to sales order number three, and then 10 units are still going to be pending for sale order number three because we have yet the availability to fulfill uh, that on a first in first out basis. If we wanted to ship out 21 units to customer two and leave the one unit for now, we can on reserve this inventory from sale order one and then allocated to sale order three, which will in turn have one pending for sale order one and then nine pending for sale order three. However, here we'll just ship out from sale order one first, that one unit, and then again, we can decide that we're going to resupply or we're going to just ship out 20 units. So let's set the quantity here and validate. Now it's going to ask us if we want to create a back order and we'll say yes, create a back order. And now since we created a back order, we'll have one back order on hand or one back order to process. And if we went to replenishment, we'll notice that we need to send out 30 units to retail store two once again. So all in all, that's how we can look at this overview screen here. And we'll see that what we did is create a main warehouse, supply our main warehouse from our vendor, and then we supplied each one of our retail stores from our main warehouse and our main warehouse or our retail stores supplied each one of our customers.